So Dave. Yes, Boater. What do you call it when an overweight member of a an overweight member of a thirteenth century mendicant order is thrown into the Marianas Trench? Hmm. Well, knowing trade negotiation between the mendicant and the human beings and other things like that, I don't know, Boater. A deep fat friar. Four out of ten. Four out of ten for this week. That one's... Okay, okay, okay. Uh, a little too long on the setup? <laughs> That's what she said. Hey, everyone, welcome to the Nerd Glasses Podcast. More I'm like Boner. Oh, no, boo. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Dave Mann, and we have so much to throw at you this week. We've got a lot, and we got to pack it into a... a we, we're going to just high pressure vomit news at you guys because we got to squeeze it into a lot. The, we might even get to a Death Stranding this week, so let's get started. The other half is we're going to mention in the game releases, but I'm going to whisper one of them because it's been very skittish about coming out, and I don't want to announce it and then scare it back right, to another right. delay. Yeah. But, Border, do you have any uh, anything on the news front? Um, sure. So I usually start off with um, who has Twitch banned this week? And I looked, and I did my research, and unfortunately, the uh, who Twitch has banned has basically just been uh, a bunch of people for DMCA takedowns. It's not interesting for me to report that anymore. It sucks, and Twitch is doing nothing to fix it. But what they are doing is that they are getting rid of a tag that people use. Uh, Dave, the first time that you play a game, if you were playing a game through for the first time on Twitch, you don't want people to spoil things for you. Um, you want everyone to know that it's your first time going through. What tag would you use? Um, I usually throw on uh, no backseat gaming. Okay. Um, and that because I've done a lot of those tags, trying to experiment with what works, what doesn't, what draws new people. Um, and then I've definitely gone uh, first time playthrough, and then I've also done um, uh, blind playthrough. And it's that last one that Twitch is getting rid of. Um, blind playthrough. Blind has a lot of meanings. Uh, and one of them, uh, you know, similar to going in blind, whatever. Blind playthrough is a term for your first time going through. First time playthrough is another. Yes. And Twitch has officially gotten rid of that as a officially supported tag. Um, you have the ability to add your own tags uh, when you start stream, so people could still use it, but it's not one that's like in the official list. Um, because of ableist language, they're getting rid of that. I know some people were asking about it. I don't know if it's something that a lot of people were asking about. I'm not sure. Like, my thoughts kind of go both ways. Like, yes, there are other things that you can use instead of blind playthrough. Um, I, me as an abled person, as a mostly sighted person, like, I don't, my voice doesn't count for much in this. It feels like an odd move to me. It feels more like, look, we're being useful and not taking care of the thing that everyone really wants to, wants us to do. I don't know your thoughts on it. It, it seems like something that they're, as someone that works with with students, that some of them do have visual impairments and things like that, and mm -hmm. and who is I've taken active roles in in advocacy and things like that. Blind playthroughs, the game tag really wasn't something that you would hear spoken about a lot. Um, yeah. Or, or, you know, even even people saying the term, I'm going in blind on this yeah. in business or things like that, people didn't really shake a fist at. However, for the sake of, as well as being a little bit more descriptive, because going in blind on this could mean that, oh yeah, I haven't played it in 16 months and ah, I don't remember, I'm yeah. going in blind. Yeah, like, like I could be going in blind on my Mad Max playthrough on the Citadel exactly. afterwards. Stay tuned because it's been three months since I played. Is that what it means? So um, it's it, it you know what good for good for taking away a, a term that is blanket used for a bunch of things, and forcing people to be a little bit more descriptive with mm -hmm. their style of playthrough. So I definitely also see that as definitely like. A, one of those flower pots for Twitch to hide behind when people are like, yeah. you know, are you going to do anything about the takedowns? Did you hear about blind playthroughs, though? I, I don't like, like the way that the term is sometimes used, but it feels a little virtue signally. But at the end of the day, it's still, hey, it's something that doesn't have a negative effect. So considering Twitch's track record lately, good job, Twitch. You didn't break something when you changed something. That's what I got. That's what I got for uh, for Twitch uh, updates right now. I'm very glad that everyone's uh, having fun playing with their uh, their chat colors here on Insane Games TV. Definitely make sure to uh, lay claim to your chat color 
by being active in the community so that people can say, hey, that's more like Rigor Morris's color. You move on. Yeah, yeah, get out of here. Um, There's actually an internet forum I'm on just has like a chat room underneath the uh, the discussion boards. And yes, it is that old a community. It is a forum. Um, and yeah, like we have, oh, hey, we have colors now. So it's like, oh, yeah, someone wants this. I'm sorry. Someone already has that shade of blue. <laughs> Like, someone got a different shade of blue, and it looks like a more saturated version than mine, and I'm over here like, hey. <laughs> What's Dave. going on, Mark, by the way, in chat? Thank you very much for stopping in, my friend. Hope things are well. Was, uh, was scoping out OC5, giving people the uh, old beatdown uh, every day, Monday to Thursday, the old right 2 to right. 5, uh, on here on Insane Games TV. So definitely check out OC5 Live. Um, Dave, so what games, actually, be, so, games coming out this week. Yes. There's a few. Yes. There's some big ones. Um, before there's some, we do that. some expected ones. We'll before say. we do that, we did actually miss two when we were talking about last week's, and I didn't realize that these were coming out because they've been on my wish list for a year and a half on ah. Steam. And then Friday rolls around, and it's like, hey, did you know that these are ready to go? You can buy these now. I was like, oh, crap. Um, really quick, those two games are Fogs, that's P-H-O-G-S, exclamation mark, Fogs. Okay. I played that on Brunch with Boater on Sunday uh, yes. with my wife, Steph. Um, it is a game that you can either do with two thumbsticks or have two people play co-op, where basically you are controlling opposite heads of a dog that is connected by a noodle body, kind of a legless cat dog situation, <laughs> but it's dog dog. It was um, hilarious. <laughs> it's so much fun. We saw that at PAX East in 2018, and it finally came out end of 2020. Um, the other game is Haven, which uh, I originally saw in a Kotaku preview 2019, but finally came out, and that is a couple that have been in a long-term relationship that um, are escaping from something and go to an uncolonized planet and explore it. Um, mm. And they have issues, whatever, but it's it's sort of a romance, but it's not them like falling in love in the start of the relationship. It is a deep-seated long-term relationship that sometimes they run into issues, um, concerning the relationship or concerning stuff, and it's yeah. like seeing them work through it. I have not played that one yet, but because of that, it is here are two people that are committed to each other that have been together for so long. Yeah, I really can't wait to start playing that game again. That one is Haven. Very nice. As always, folks, my in the news games radar is not perfect because there are about a billion There's games so coming games. out every week. Yep. There are big releases. There are little releases. There are PC games that get released every single second. minute. And there are apps on the phone that get released every single second. So but, definitely... But, but they do have to split their revenue 70-30, so... Unless they're a small app developer on iOS nowadays, true, you know that they true. get uh, the injustice that Apple would deign to spit in the face of Epic Games and the Coalition for App Fairness. <laughs> but... Sorry, I'd just uh, like to get you started. Go ahead, Some Dave. of the games, now that my dander's up and good... Uh, some of the games coming out between this time and next press time uh, of will be uh, on the 9th. You're looking, if you have a Nintendo Switch, you're looking for the game Ghost Runner. It's a cyberpunk Ooh. action video game. Um, and it's, it looks... I, I tried that. I downloaded the demo of that because I'm, they have a demo available. <laughs> nice. Well, it's it also, so did you, you played it on the Switch, obviously. Or no, was it on PC? I, no, I played it on PC. Nice. Um, and it was cool. It was interesting to try out. I died a lot. Its whole thing is if you... It's parkour and melee combat. You go here, here, here. And each area is kind of its own puzzle. Okay. Um, and so if you get shot, immediate death. It's one hit kill. Hmm. But instant reload back to the start of that area. Go ahead and try again. Um, I played it for maybe a half an hour and realized it wasn't exactly my cup of tea. It was a little too... Uh, that's not how I like my puzzles. Yeah. Um, but it definitely has a really cool pace, a really nice aesthetic. I enjoyed what little I played of the demo. Vladdy's saying, I bought the game on PC, dot, dot, dot. Haven't touched it yet. <laughs> I want to play it, though. The story of everyone's uh, PC game so collection. So hard mode mirrors edge. <laughs> um, yes, but easy mode mirrors edge uh, loading screens. Ha! <laughs> so um, you can look forward to that t starting tomorrow on your and Nintendo And with a katana. Switch. Very nice. Um, the, the other games that caught my attention were uh, Medal of Honor is getting 
another installment. Nice. But it is the first one since 2012's Medal of Honor Warfighter. Wow, I, th- I was thinking it had been a while for Medal of Honor. Um, Medal of Honor Above and Beyond. I'm like, are they still around? No, but they dug up the corpse and slapped a new coat of paint on it. Off we go. D- in typical series, I think the, fr- the franchise really, Medal of Honor especially, took a heavier hit when, because it used to be Medal of Honor and Battlefield. Those were the two games um, um, that that grew out of console okay. gaming. I don't know about okay. PC things, but um, those were the two that would compete for your base dollar on the PlayStation 2 and on the Xbox. I, would, like I would say Call of Duty up through 3 was in with those, and it's when Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare hit that it began to eclipse the other two. Well, yes, but again, for that market, it was the two of them. Call of Duty was really in kind of a bubble of its own. Was it? Okay. Yes. Uh, sales-wise and especially in its own advertising, it really did outshine the other two. I didn't know that. I and only like, kind of saw them in retrospect. When it picked them up, um, they did grow out. Medal of Honor was the one that kind of fell behind. Medal of Honor was also the one that went for interesting uh, and a little bit out there in the fact that they used the word Taliban in, in a previous installment. They went for these, hey, this is current events in a warfighter yeah. game. That clearly didn't pay off in the way that Call of Duty did by do, going the routes that they did, by uh, Battlefront going the route that they did, which was to intelligently, instead of going future, go to the past. But um, yeah. So if you have PC, uh, Medal of Honor Above and Beyond looks like it could be the Medal of Honor title for you, starting nice. on the 11th. I'm excited to see that, again, because like it's been Call of Duty and then Battlefield underneath that. Yeah. And then uh, it's cool to see Medal of Honor come back out. Uh, yeah, take another stab at it. I'm and hoping... Best of luck. Yeah, I'm hoping that they're able to continue to do what, what happens to the FPS genre, which is there's a norm. Everybody makes games based upon whatever the popular trend is. And then see people start to move away from that trend. And then a big one big definitive game, I don't think... That yeah, above a and game beyond. will come in and redefine a few ways that things are done. Uh, Halo yes. coming in and doing, yeah, you can carry two weapons, not 17. Um, and grenades have a separate button. Like, changed a lot of things. And then people copied that for a while out. Call of Duty came by and really defined how things were done, I would say, late aughts. And then a lot yeah. followed in its tracks. So, um, I'm going to, interestingly enough, uh, on the 10th, you can grab on uh, all seemingly mobile platforms which is very interesting but uh windows and android uh but it is orwell's animal farm an indie game adaptation of george orwell's animal farm coming to pc mac and mobile on december 10th this is a game i'm probably gonna buy because i'm very interested to see what it looks like because it is a game that uh is based upon a novel that i forced a lot of students to have to read um and just because it's interesting. Yeah. Um, I it's, will. It's right now. Yeah, on that landing page right now, you can add it to your Steam wish list, and they're expecting it to also show up on uh, GOG, Humble, Epic Games, and what's that last one? Uh, Green Man Gaming. Green Man Gaming. Okay. Uh, not one I've heard of. It may be uh, like, but I like, I like seeing smaller stores do their thing too. It'll also be available on uh, Amazon's mobile app, Google Play, and the App Store. Cool. Um, Hopefully they get their 30% back. Um, but... Hey, Akai, how's it going? Welcome, and thank you for dropping in. We're going through some of the uh, releases that we can look forward to in the next seven days. Um, before I get to the really big one that's coming out, I do want to mention a personal handheld favorite of mine is coming back to the Nintendo Switch, and my Switch is going to be so full of RPGs that all of my streaming is literally going to turn into that as soon as I hit the lottery and this turns into a big thing and I can buy all of them. But... Final I'll, Fantasy Legend. I'll get you Legend. a micro SD card so you can load up even more RPGs. Oh, yeah. But have you heard of Final Fantasy Legend? I feel like maybe. I it, feel like you've probably mentioned it on here before. I have when I mentioned games that made you go, huh, this wasn't bad. It wasn't what I thought it was going to be, but it wasn't bad. Okay, okay. It was a Game Boy release of the Final Fantasy franchise. It was a spinoff. It came out around the era of Final Fantasy II. Um... And it's coming to the Nintendo Switch. I will probably be picking that up because it's probably going to be pennies on the dollar. Um, and I really liked uh, these little these little RPG experiences, the little easy packaging and, yeah, yeah. and all the fun that came with it. Um, but it had a Final Fantasy story, so it's obviously... The, here is seven items of power. 
Oh no! Go get the items of power back. Like, <laughs> um, boy, it sure would be a shame if these weren't attached anymore. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank God the world is hinged on this one little gem. And, ah! <laughs> it's always the one guy. It's always Kafka. It's always Kafka that just <laughs> takes it and just hawks it. For those of you who don't know who Kafka is, don't look him up. It's terrifying. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna slow it down because I don't want to scare this last release. Okay, make but, sure you speak loud enough to drown out the mall music so that we don't get a DMCA takedown. But technically, on the third, the long-awaited... Dave, the third has gone past. Long... Yeah. The tenth. The tenth. Excuse my, uh, excuse my 48 hours it of work. It was delayed again. <laughs> um, excuse my, uh, my works and things. It's fine. Um, on the tenth... It's been a long everything. Looks like it, we're going to be seeing the console and digital release of Cyber. Punk 2077. And Dave, I'm pretty confident that we're actually going to see it. Um, on GOG, which I didn't realize is, I think, like wholly owned by CG, CD Projekt Red because uh, they've made a big deal of if you order the game on <gasps> GOG, then CD Projekt Red gets 100% of the profits rather than just a 70% share. Ooh. That's app fairness. Um, so if you, <clears throat> you can pre-order on GOG. If you pre-ordered on... Um, Xbox One and PlayStation, it's begun preloading now, so it doesn't come out until two days from now, but on most platforms it is now preloading. So I think it's good to go. That's, that's preloading with the game plus a 43 gigabyte day one patch, mind you. I'm greatly looking forward to seeing what this game is. Um, I've read, I've read some previews on it, I'm looking at it, and just... I feel I feel like it's going to be an interesting game for me to play. I don't know if it's going to be a, a game that I get absolutely sucked into, but I also just looking at like ethically with um, how it's dealt with some issues, uh, how it's dealt with trans issues, how CD Projekt Red continues to put crunch on their developers even when they say that they won't. That may be a game that I get used so that I do not contribute more money to the developer. I'm not sure yet. We'll see how it goes. I also... I'm looking at it and how good it looks. Uh, I will be waiting until I get an Xbox Series X to get it because I feel like it's not going to be as complete an experience on an Xbox One. So I've got time. When I finally get a Series X, I'm sure they'll be available used and I'll get a copy. I know here on Insane Games TV, if you haven't seen in the background of videos or been in the store, first of all, if you haven't seen the new store... Uh, let us just not Get suddenly mention <laughs> our article that we were featured on the front page Dave, should I go grab of it? the Saratogian. Uh, right. Sure. Eee! I think there's a couple on the coffee table out there. Okay. Um, but uh, so, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of good coming to Insane Games TV. And uh, I, I personally would like to thank all of you folks uh, who, who come here every single week and support the streams and all the work that we're doing. Um, Boder's now hanging up that article, and uh, I, I did read, Dan, Mike, and I did talk about it on uh, part of one of the things, but I did want to read one of my favorite little bits, which definitely confirms that the person who wrote this article um, has an awareness of, um, of current times and also the efforts that we have had to go through to have this. Which I is, was impressed when <clears> I read <throat> the article online. As many small businesses are struggling due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, Insane Games has managed to grow both its physical and online presence. And that's all due in part to the efforts of the streamers, to Dan, to Tom, and also to you, the folks who support, who chat, who subscribe, who cheer bits, who do anything. And thank you. Because this is what we want to do and we want to make a better product for you guys. And the best way to help that is uh, to continue to do what you're doing. Help, hang out with us, chat with us, be a part of the community as much as you can. Um, it's not a, hey, buy a t-shirt. Although, swanky digs you got there, Boater. Why, thank you. I happen to be wearing a The Citadel t-shirt from Insane Games TV. Actually, I can stand up. I think I'm mostly in frame here. You are You are in frame. And... Uh, I like it. Boater, how many times have you washed that shirt, worn that shirt? What's the, give us the lowdown on it. Because uh, I bought a bunch of shirts from Hot Topic, and I ripped through them like Lou Ferrigno. I mean, I, I'm not ripping through it, but it's definitely shrunk a bit in the in the dryer. I've definitely got a little more. 
up here than showing that I like normally. <laughs> I'm a little self-conscious there, but it's dark, so it's fine. It hides everything. <laughs> um, the the t-shirts that are on there, I would say order plus one size, and eventually it'll shrink and you'll be fine. Um, I might have to poke Dan and be like, please make the heavyweight premium tees available. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of cool designs up there. The Citadel is only one. Another really cool design is the Weekend Wednesday design. I love the ones for Dream Team. There's a ton of really cool designs up there on the page. Uh, so, uh, yes. No, I, I don't know if the bot has dropped the link in chat yet. Um, I'm sure it will soon, though. Uh, yes, uh, let me let me copy this. Uh, no, don't ban the user. Voter for the I'll sake. Co of, I'll copy this link into chat for everybody. For the for the sake of the folks at home, because they're calling for uh, tight shirts for the views and show the pecs. Do you want to do like a five second pose sure. for the posterity of people watching at home? We just lost two viewers. This is good. So we'll just. This is what you requested. That is. This is what wow, you get. That is about as much as my shoulder can do. Let me just kind of oh, lazily yeah, have baby. to sit over here. Seven days a yeah. week. Gaming. Oh, that actually kind of hurt a little. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Oh, that's this. awful. <laughs> I love every <laughs> single thing about that, and I'm going to... And especially <laughs> when I dead arm my fucking shoulder. <laughs> oh, God. So... Later in the show, by the way, uh, Dan did in fact say yes to our challenge. And not only that, but I didn't have to buy the Lego sets. Dan bought them. I know. Um, he will be coming on and doing the Lego challenge with us. But I did generate clip. <laughs> Please do, because that, that'll definitely be front page of the new uh, Nerd Glasses. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, my question for you, you guys you in chat... It. That clip has been made. I've got a couple different stories for today, and I want you guys to pick um, while Boder and I talk about a quick topic. Yep. Do you want to hear about Baldur's Gate 3? Do you want to hear about uh, Red Dead Redemption 2? Or would you guys like to hear about um, speculation on the Metal Gear Solid film? Boder, remember how we've been talking about how many people have been moving on and making new studios and things like that? Yeah, yeah. Um... Firstly, thank you so much, more like Rigor Mortis, for resubscribing right there on Boater. Um, we sub now that I have income again. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. I feel a little filthy for for that, but yeah, cool. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and thank you, more like Rigor Mortis. And in, I hope you enjoy your mic lips that you can use co contextless to people in text messaging, by the way. Um, <laughs> those Twitch emotes are yours to use, free of charge. Um... But uh, a very interesting studio popped up on the radar that, that only caught my attention because um, uh, it's featuring three people who have left the Sony studios to strike out on their own. Um, okay, cool. It's, I actually have related news after that, but go ahead. Oh, cool. Um, it is not uh, a, a, a meeting of ways due to creative differences or any circumstance. It is, however, uh, uh, three folks that wanted to continue to pursue gaming ventures but not have to deal with being in a AAA setting where deadlines are concrete and you absolutely must meet them mm -hmm. or someone else will. Um, but the staff that worked on those uh, worked on uh, the Silent Hill franchise from all the way back. Oh, wow, okay. Um, and Pedigree. also were uh, on the top end of creative and, and writing on Gravity Rush, the series okay. of games. Okay. So, uh, Bokeh Game Studios, Godspeed to you, and I look greatly forward to what products you put out because they did an announcement and a trailer where they just talked about their aspirations for gaming. Now, I will say it striked a lot like, sounded like uh, any of the press videos for Mighty Number no. 9, except that they weren't then also saying, if you give me money, I'll make a bigger game. <laughs> um, so... I, I greatly look forward to seeing what Bokeh can can make and what they wind up doing, um, especially knowing their pedigree uh, and, and penchant for both terrifying, yeah. but then different game mechanics in a, in a very similar yeah. uh, and easy to digest style. Absolutely. So you, uh, uh, another story yeah. sparked to mind? So um, I, I, I may have mentioned um, N7 Day, which is a celebration of Mass Effect. Oh, yeah. Uh, November 7th. Um, they, Bioware just decided that December 4th was going to be Dragon Age Day. I don't know why December 4th, but they released a whole bunch of news. 
and some stuff happened, <laughs> oh, no. and some stuff happened that they were not expecting, and that is that the creative director of Bioware, Casey Hudson, uh, and the uh, Dragon Age producer Mark Dara both left. Wow, that's not good. <laughs> yeah, like they're they're. I think the next Dragon Age is going to be the next big Bioware one that comes out. They've talked about work being done on that. uh, And uh, I think coming out next year, though I could be wrong on that. Um, Mark Dara has, has, I think, been working on the Dragon Age series since Origins. Um, And he's gone. I don't know if he was, like, the one way at the top for Dragon Age, but he was definitely up there. And then, of course, Casey Hudson was involved in Bioware for a long time. Um, left, I think, around the time of Mass Effect 3, and then came back around the time of Mass Effect Andromeda um, as the studio head rather than just a project lead. Um, and he left again. Um, the press and everything is all very much, yes, this is totally fine and expected. Meanwhile, Bioware has no studio head, nobody ready to step up. This was not planned, so we'll see how this goes for Bioware. Oh, God. <laughs> So what you're saying is that a, a AAA company went, by the way, here's a celebration of all this work that other people did. And then the other people went, check, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, Casey Hudson, it was a name that I recognize. I don't pay attention to name producers too much. Casey Hudson is a name I recognize. And I was like, oh, wow. And then, like, with Dragon Age, I think either on or slightly past the horizon, um, for one of their lead producers to also leave. That's like, ooh. That's so bad. That's a telling sign, by the way, folks. Uh, Dragon Age, what's going to be the next one? Four? Yeah. Um, maybe me and Boater are going to wait a little while to get it, just because that's not a good sign when your top ends go, I'm not on here anymore. I mean, anymore. the only one that I've played <laughs> is two, and that makes me a very weird person. <laughs> Uh, I don't think that we've had a vote for any of those three topics that you get uh, that you handed out. So let's just go with the first one. I'm, well, uh, so I'll, I'll talk about a positive since okay. we've had okay. yeah, since yeah, we've yeah. had a couple fall aparts. This one, this one, I know you, me, and a lot of folks in chat can definitely. Um, I'm gonna get it anyway. <laughs> oh, that's, that's why December fourth, DA four, December fourth. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, <laughs> okay, five out of ten. Um, yeah, like, which is cool for, like, if it's coming up in the next year, but then what do you do in years going forward? You know, when there's seven Dragon Age games, are you still doing it on December 4th? It's it's very true. How are you going to schedule it around Whereas that the N7, one? the N7 November 7th thing was very natural. Like, yeah, that that's that's playing into, like, you know what, though? In Dragon Age 4, they can just pick a, a random number, a letter and number combination, <laughs> and they can have the character, like, look at the screen and be like, P62. Hey. Like... <laughs> He doesn't even start a month. I, was gonna I know. Go with, I was going to go with Jay, but that's very, that's not very specific. Yes! <laughs> I have managed to break Boder once again. So, Baldur's Gate 3. Okay, Baldur's Gate 3. So, it, it recently was had it a... Was Baldur's Gate a Bioware thing at first? Uh, Baldur's Gate was a Bioware thing, and then it moved actually into more of a... Uh, you know what? Let me, uh... As long as we're on the topic. As long as we're on the topic, I'm going to pull up some more logistics about it. Because they patched it recently, and the patches, why they did the patches, are terribly interesting. And I really liked them um, from relatable experiences. Um, so Baldur's Gate 3... Ah, heck, we'll just dive into the into the franchise history. <laughs> uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. It's been a Bioware product, Snowblind Studios, Black Isle Studios, High Voltage Software, <laughs> Beamdog, oh my God. and Loren Studios. This thing has been passed around like that one drink at a party. Don't drink the Kool-Aid, by the way. Um, but, but there's more interesting things than that. So they, they announced that they were going to be doing a patch because, well, first of all, um, they wanted to incentivize people to stop being murder hobos. <laughs> they wanted to incentivize players to seek non-conflict resolutions to uh, instances and plot lines by giving players combat incentives later in the line and also just extra chat trees more rewards different experience points earned for for seeking a a, a non-combat avenue i know boring because you can't just then throw your uh 
your your least favorite player at the tavern keeper, but such is the playthrough for some people. Um, they fixed the companion approval system because okay. apparently they were a lot like that lady from White Run you got saddled with, where everything you did, she goes, "Yes, sir." Oh, it is my duty to serve. No matter what I bought for her, no matter what I gave her, she was never happy, and I hated it. Which is why I sacked her for a quest line. Um, <laughs> the land before time. <laughs> um, Remember parties. So, it, the companion approval system is definitely overhauled. It's not. It wasn't as bad as like the Gandhi problem, where once he reached yeah. a certain amount, he was like, "Well, nuking everything." But they were generally not very nice to the players, and that kind of sucks. Uh-huh. Um, they also added a companion's autofollow function, and if you've ever played a game where you have a party and the AI c- uh, controls one of the players as they move around the map, who doesn't love when an AI player gets stuck on a corner because you cut it too sharp and they get stuck? Or Dave, in- there is a very, very specific episode of me playing Knights of the Old Republic with that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, there is. I started to call Jolie Bindo names that I'm not proud of. <laughs> YouTube.com slash Borderbug. Definitely check those playthroughs out because they're hilarious. I got hilarious. very creative with the transitions in that episode. Um, but what they did was, the other thing that they added was, in, in D&D, which Baldur's Gate is a, a story in. Yes. Um, yeah, ultimately it is, uh, it is a D&D uh, setting. You know, your more agile characters can jump very far. Your not so agile characters like your goddamn wizard can't. And so when you would <laughs> travel places... The wizard would then just kind of stand there like an asshole, not doing anything, <laughs> as you traveled into the hearth and into the fire, and the wizard would be like, well, I don't have the skill points to do that jump, so I'm just going to pick my nosey over here. But they added so that companions will auto-follow you. Yay. You do a giant jump, even if they, they, they can't. You're just imagining that they held on to your cape and went, ah! Yeah, and then they just, like, poof, they're there. Like, how many times, I think, while playing two human when just, oh yeah, cool, he's there now, great. I, I always enjoyed, though, when you would turn around and there they would be, and it's like, ah! <laughs> yeah, yeah, when, like, <laughs> when, like, I'm looking here, and it's like, all right, cool, they're way over there, let me just look back, and it's like, ah! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> it's like John, anytime he visits. <laughs> I turn around, and there he is, doing something nice in my apartment. Right. Um, but the reason why I, I definitely pr- brought this up Yes. is they have patched over environmental services will react differently to players nowadays because apparently a lot of people were dying because they were getting lit on fire. A lot of players were learning why when you're in a cave or inside of a room or inside of a dungeon, you don't use fireball! Don't use it, wizard! Okay? Fireball's not a party-friendly spell. Yes, if everyone is. else is down, then you throw it. All right? I'm sorry. I just... Fireball <clears throat> is the answer. Fire is the answer. If there is a problem, you use fire. That's what makes it D&D. So they've apparently ma- matched it a little closer to the game where um, the surfaces will no longer stay on fire depending on what they are, such as rock or dirt or things like that, that were causing players to then such as your wizard, to traipse over it and receive a whole lot of fire damage, even though they were the ones that crushed the spells. Loved it. Um, Someone did a fan cut of Sherlock, of a Sherlock game when the uh, Hunter Music and Jump Scare whenever Watson showed up. That's hilarious. Wow. Um, But, Boater, another game got a patch recently, and it's on the opposite side of the video game spectrum. Okay. Red Dead Redemption 2 uh, online Yellow Feller Endeavor is having some monetization issues okay. in that okay. it's not Grand Theft Auto 5, which is so it's not the cash cow with which to Grand be Grand Theft Auto 5 has outlasted a console generation. That yep. came out on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Yep. Yes, it did. And uh, it's probably going to be getting released on the, f- on the 5 and the X. They haven't decided, but they're likely leaning on it. But... Red Dead Redemption 2 has added a, a, uh, a battle pass system, a la all the other online games. But it's not so much the scumminess to be expected that goes along with that. 
It's that they went the extra mile on these ones. For, as you know, a lot of these games offer daily challenges. When you log in every day, you get a certain reward. Yeah. The currency, the premium currency that they would use, are gold bars. Which makes sense in the context of the era. Yeah. Not, gold bars weren't just flying around. Yeah. So, when you would do daily challenges, you would have a point four chance at a gold bar for every single challenge completed. Point four. Of one or 0.4%? Point 0.4 point four of one. Okay. So a 40% chance of getting a gold bar. So they did that, but then they decided to tinker with that ratio, and now it's point 0.1. Okay. A so, one in ten chance of yes. actually getting a reward for doing a thing. So they've decreased that. The worst thing that they did, though, was when they implemented the new patch, they reset everyone's challenges... Uh. And some people had had challenges going into years at this point. Uh, but don't worry, Boater. They were rewarded with $600 Red Dead Online bucks. You know, not the premium currency that they would do this grinding for. Um, they also did something very interesting. So to give you, to give you an idea... Um, my soul hurts. These, these gold bars, to give you context, there is a gun skin that costs 12 gold bars. The most recent bounty hunter levels, which are in addition and more content to play online, is 15 gold bars, which apparently is an increase from the 10 that they used to be. On top of that, the battle pass that you can either earn by playing and then collecting the premium currency and then buying it costs 40 gold bars to get. Do you know how many gold bars you earn by completing the battle pass, Boater? 25. 30. Still not enough to get the battle pass, though. Well, no. And clearly, they want you to put in actual money for the battle pass. So, uh... Uh-uh. Not space bucks. Horse bucks. Yeah. Horsey dollars. West, uh, wild, wild West bucks. Giddy up bucks. Yeah, but... giddy bucks. <laughs> ya yeah, dollar. <laughs> I think ya dollar wins. <laughs> Woo! So... That went really fast. <laughs> That went from whoa to giddy up in like three seconds. So, Rockstar, shame on you. And how dare you make something so simple as me wanting to make beans over the fire so complicated. Um, interesting news in cinema, especially considering that, you know, people are having trouble filming. Movies are getting pushed back. And uh, as we talked about on uh, yesterday on uh, Behind the Counter... Uh, movie studio movie theater stocks have dropped a ungodly percentage but oscar isaac you know from yep. uh, from money fame in a lot of different films was recently confirmed to have been casted in sony's metal gear solid movie as solid snake nice the man himself lives now i know what you're saying but dave oscar isaac's really involved with other projects that's right they're not gonna be doing any filming in the next calendar year, but because he's doing Moon Knight yeah. for Disney. Yeah, so he's, he's attached to it. When when people get attached to something this early, there's still a chance that it doesn't reach completion. But that's that's pretty cool. I, I love seeing his star rise, It's it's and I love seeing him do more. Like, I only just became aware of him from Star Wars, but I've really enjoyed him in those. He, he plays what he's written for very well. Yes. Um, even yes. when Poe is an insufferable ass, I can tell that Oscar Isaac is doing a great job playing it. So I'm, I'm excited for that. I'm excited to see more with him. I'm very excited to see Metal Gear. <laughs> hold on, Pardon. hold on. Uh, Alec, Alec has, has started it with Snake. Snake. <laughs> Snake! <laughs> so there's a lot of names attached to this project. There's a lot of good talents, and I'm greatly looking forward to seeing how this goes but it looks like the bell has been rung and uh dan is ready to uh to put his uh his prowess of calling himself the lego master on the line dan are you ready to uh to face up to the uh the we're gonna shift things just a little bit here i'm gonna try to put this a little more central and Boater No Shouty, so that you guys can kind of be heard on the mic. Boater No Shouty. Oh, shit. Is this... Am I on the Nerd Boston podcast? Again? Oh, my God. Look at that. So this Dan record, how many times? Now, I'm my voice, sure. we're not counting. 
Okay. How many times I've actually so made an physical appearance appearances Undertale. since the relaunch? Since the relaunch, I think this might be the first time. Since, I, since we, I mean, what we, what are we considering well, relaunch here? Well, 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 since the mall has opened back up, I think this is the this first is the time first that you've time been. Yeah. Yes. I'm talking like overall. Overall, this might be the second time. There was, there was every there time was, we had a guest host um, in studio, the, the time that Joe uh, sat in for you, voter, Dan did appear okay. and we did a, okay. a, a, a fun gimmick where we opened oh, uh, cards. Oh, okay. um, yeah, yeah. The only other time and I the taste remember. tests. Oh, that's right. The tastings. When I when I drew food, Dan would come out. These lights <laughs> I think like the really the solid appearance. I think the last time was the Call of Duty tournament. You guys were asking yeah. questions that I yes. could not answer. Yeah. All right. All right. So, so what have we got? Lego Master Dan. So as we was discussed last week, we were talking about Lego. So I said we'd go out and we I would get three of the same Lego. So no one has it. Like it's not like we're. You're building an aircraft, and I'm building a motorcycle, and yep. And so I got three of the same. However, I'm gonna go with my genre. Okay. City. Okay. Or, oh, so Lego I'm, City. I'm going okay. with my my specialty. So call it an advantage. I don't know. Whatever you want. So ironically, the only one that tar- first off, Lego is becoming pretty hard to get. Yes, yes, okay? they so are. Luckily, I was able to even find. Find a that. set with with three so copies of the same one. I, wa- I was about to go with one, which, and it was it, it was a bigger box. It definitely would have taken us more than one yeah. thing to probably do. <laughs> so, but and I, so I'm looking. I'm like, are you kidding me? There's nothing. Uh, there's nothing there. And so that was at Walmart this morning. So then when I went to Target later, I was like, you know what? Oh, these can work right here. So I found these little. Street sweepers. <gasps> That's amazing. Oh my god, I love them! <laughs> so they look small enough where I think we can get it relatively. Yeah, I'll pass this one on. Here. I'll hold it up to the camera so that folks can see. Thank you so much, Love Alec, for gifting that sub to the community, by the way. And Mark, enjoy your mic face. But uh, it's a street sweeper, and this is actually one of my favorite city sets, by the way. Is this a street um, one? Yeah. It's because I love the brushes. I love that they turn. I'm gonna yes. Open it okay. Look at what we're dealing with. Okay. Oh, so we're we're not doing oh. from the box. I thought it was gonna be from the box opening. Oh. Right. No, that's fine. Oh, that's okay. fine. Well, let's all let's all get the box open. Okay. But, but leave it in there so that we're. You know all what? I'll just open and see what I'm dealing so with. We're not, so we're not we're not gonna so, savage the boxes. So, well, I'm savage. I'm savaging this box. So um, we we are speed building then. Take out, dump out the box, and then we will. From go. Okay. So we 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 appreciate yeah, taking yeah, them all out of the box. So yep. My question is every single. Thing has to be built. It has to be yep. complete. So like that includes the guy, the little minifigure, and, and all the, that. So you know what? The last thing has to be. We'll we'll know you're done because you have clicked the uh, the broom ec- and and sweeper accessories to the back okay. of the vehicle. Okay. And I'm gonna time it too. Right? Okay. That should also be part of it as a record okay. of the. Uh, because I, you know they make a lot of them that are this size, but we actually can make it a little bit of a thing. Where like you know the, the 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 city makes a lot of like the smaller vehicles. Yeah. I was ideally trying to go for like the police car, which really is even smaller than this. Yeah. This okay. Should be perfect. Are we ready? Hang on. Let me my, uh, so so what, is, what are we? How are we going to deal if someone were to walk into the store? Someone walks into the store. Everyone hands off. Dave and I can talk about other and stuff. And the book has to be closed. Okay. There's yep. No we'll, like. Oh, there's that piece. Yep. We'll close oh, the book. Slip, slip something in so you know where. Know where all yep. of are. Close the book. Slip something in so you know where you were. But close Dave, the book. Close the book. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We ready? That. Go. Yeah. Okay. So we're getting all the instructions of hey. I don't want to the code. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would normally just use my teeth to rip this open. I can't do that. I'm going with the spread and look method of putting all the pieces out and just yeah, knowing. Yeah, these, these, um. So, thankfully, we're on a glass are, These table. are not bags in order. Oh, God, his head was in the trash can. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I need to talk while I'm doing it, too. Okay, feet. Where is this Pete? Oh, my God, where is it? <laughs> Dan's off to a great start, everybody. Dan's already panic pooping. We, Devoter and I have already won. No, you haven't. All right, dude in trash can. Step one done. 
I kind of wanted the bags to explode open and pieces go everywhere. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> I, th I honestly thought about popping it, but you, I really want to build this. Yeah, I, I could see you for the lulls absolutely absolutely doing that, but uh, no, it's, it's no, we're doing this. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a little colorblind here, so I'm looking at these colors. And I'm it's rough like, over there. there. If there's not a light on that table, it's kind of rough. I, I the, actually like don't have a light here, so I'm looking at the color and going, is that green? It's like this isn't as bad as one, the first night that I was doing this, and it's like, is that light gray, dark gray, that tan beige color? What's going on? It's not as bad as all that, but it's still. But you know what? That equals out the advantage that you took because you selected the set in the first place, so that just evens out. Okay. All of a sudden, we're quiet. We're in it. We're in the freaking zone. Oh, yeah. I've never focused on anything so hard in my entire working life. Hey, Dan. I've never focused on boss. anything so hard as this today. Hello, Dan, my employer that I'm definitely not admitting that I zone out mentally <laughs> while I'm working. Dave, where's all the product? Oh, shit. He's not listening. He's Legoing. You can say whatever you want. He wouldn't notice. Uh... Yep, that's where that's going to go. Definitely next time we do one, I'm going to have to turn the lights on over here. <laughs> truth. Absolute truth. I'm trying to like make sure I get the colors right. Because they're the same what pieces, but different okay. colors. So let's see here. Ah, ah, where's the other one? Right there. Right. Oh, nope. I almost got this. I almost like got a sponsorship, maybe? Uh, yep, that's where that's gonna go. That's what she said. This is more like rigor mortis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kudos to you for keeping an eye on chat. I'm like, no, speed build. Oh no! As, as, oh no, we have a drop! As much as, as much as I, uh, I would like to say, like, I beat Boater and Dan in a Lego building contest, I, uh, I also really appreciate that folks are tuning in to yeah. watch us <laughs> build Lego sets. Drop, yeah. drop, drop, drop! Dave, you're distracting everybody! Oh, yeah, baby. I'm missing a black piece. No, I just found it. Oh, he's back in a black piece. Oh, that's cute. Oh, interesting. Do you guys notice that these pieces came pre-stickered? Oh, that's handy. Kids today won't know what it means to have to put stickers on the pieces. Duh. Back in my day, we used to have to do our own stickers. And if you did it With wrong... With a Sharpie! And you had to sniff them yourself. <laughs> If you did it wrong, you had the stupid version, and people wouldn't play at your house anymore. Yeah, the the pressure of the stupid stickers. I feel like did you? building all the Gundam models on stream has uh, definitely helped me to not be as stressed out about doing this. Um, because those things are just infinite wasters of pieces and me scanning panically to make sure savannah hasn't like eaten one of them <laughs> you only get one try with stickers back in the day stfu yeah. dave i love stickers it's more like rigor mortis oh it's not an indictment on the stickers themselves it is an indictment however on the fact that lego stickers were ultra unforgiving and oh yeah then impossible to get more of absolutely yeah because you couldn't just get a sheet of stickers it's it's one and done and if you off-centered it even a little bit, you were over. I don't know. Boater, I think Dan might have us on this. I don't even think he's close. Oh, crap. Boater, then should we share a, uh, a glasses push together? Uh, oh, no. Hold on. There. Oh, my gosh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I, was, I was delayed for a bit too long uh -oh. for a piece. Uh oh! I put a piece in the wrong place! Uh -oh. Ah! oh, I should have grabbed my uh, removal tool over there. <laughs> no, that would have been an unfair advantage. None of that, none of that, none of that. <laughs> Dan would have been performance enhancing tools! <laughs> <laughs> no customers in the store. Oh, good, good. Someone's on top of that. <laughs> Well, again, I love Insane Games TV, and I will do everything in my power. But to be totally honest, I, uh, I love Insane Games, and I want it to succeed, which is why all of you wonderful folks are making it so much fun yeah. and allowing us to do this. I could 100% just see us like doing this, and then a whole bunch of cheering, and then just cut to the front of the store, and I'm like, oh, 
Hello? Hello? <laughs> Ding dong. You know what? I'm giving this place a bad review. Oh boy. Zero out of zero stars. Ooh, what is this? Orange. Oh, uh, have any of you guys heard, and anyone in chat uh, while you're watching us Lego build, have any of you guys heard the quintessential, you've ruined Christmas? Oh. Uh, Dan, have you gotten that yet? What? Uh, you've ruined Christmas for my son or daughter or child. Not yet. <laughs> None yet? Nope. Oh. No comments as of yet. But it's just the beginning of yeah, the Yeah, it's, it's, the season is young. Give it time. Tis the season to be grumpy. Fa la 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 jerks. Yeah. The year. Uh, yeah, yeah. D can you say DMCA takedown? Any Christmas second now? this year. <laughs> Thankfully, we don't yet run on ad revenue. That's my new Christmas carol. What are you can't skip any steps? Says Dream and Dragon. I noticed. I'm not talking to the poor folks in chat. You're getting <laughs> silent. Getting competitive. I, I yeah, I am. By the way, folks, we... If uh, I can't take the Halo title, I'll take this. The challenge has not fallen on deaf ears. I think I got screwed a piece. Well, uh, later when I'm building, if I find a tire piece, I will be disappointed. You probably dropped it. No. Uh, yes, I am still uh, alive in Whamageddon, uh, so I haven't been knocked out of that. I got knocked out the first day, thanks to Dan, actually. Ooh. Because he put on Lay Holiday tunes and they came on immediately. And so I danced. And screw you, Lego. Wow. You still missing a tire? You sure it's not in the floor? <laughs> I will I will check the floor, but uh TBH. Never mind. It was under my cell phone. Screw you, Lego tire. I hate you forever. It's the right time to shop your time away. Come to the Wilton Mall. No, we're not closed yet. Done. Wow. I mean, I can put the guy in there. The guy got go in, Boater. Not that I think it's going to change anything. Done. Wait, no, that was upside down. Incorrect. Kids, time taken off. <gasps> he has a Dave hat. I'm really excited. There. there. Done. Oh, there's no place like home for the holidays. Of course, the, the really important test is going to be, does everyone have the same leftover pieces? Oh. I was close. No, I'm not dead. They beat me by one pay, or Bowie beat me by one pay. I was going to say, Dan, you're still in the... Uh in the runnings to not lose to the uh, the Dave train. Except now you lost, because I'm done. Did you really? <laughs> yep. Wow. Do you have five extra pieces? Uh, I do. I have five spare pieces. We have the exact same five spare pieces. <laughs> that means we did it right. <laughs> That's fun. Oh, and I like that, like, Dave, when you move it around, Shit. because the the blue what is going on here? front brushes are at an angle, they turn as well. Yeah. Very well designed Lego Beast. Uh, trash can. Enjoy some it. Uh, Some rotten produce. Uh, because for our international fans uh, in America, we, we throw out our produce. We don't just give it to people. We just let it go to waste. And we barely have any uh, municipal composting, so. <laughs> is there five pieces left? Yep. Uh, Dan's I was, done. I was in the running, but the end of this killed me here. Yeah? Getting the, I couldn't get this thing back on the top. Oh, gotcha. 
I would say that was a very close battle. That was fun. Thank Closer you. Closer than I thought. I didn't think Dave was at all in the running based off of the way wow. he was talking. <laughs> no, just I wasn't looking yeah, yeah. at him. Just yeah. the way he was talking. It made yeah, it he seem was like talking he... very casually. <laughs> he, he didn't have the demeanor of the, like, I'm in it to win it kind of thing. And he still did quite well. I have a feeling I would have been closer to Boater's time had I not have lost that tire piece. Yeah. And then turned the page back. That's, Dan, that's a real time killer. Does your things actually work when you move them? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That should be, that should be functionality <gasps> counts as well. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh my god, it cleans the table! Woo! And like, I wonder, like the the side brush piece—is that like something that they made just for this, or is that something that was already pre-existing in the Lego set? Uh, I haven't these, seen that before. These existed on previous washer okay. versions and the Lego okay. City's version of the car wash. Oh yeah, that um, makes sense that it could find yeah a lot of uses for that in Lego City. So for those of you watching at home, now we're playing with the toys that we have built. Um, but you know, we're just about to uh, switch over. Boater, what's going on after the nerd glasses? After the Nerd Glasses podcast, I will be playing Mad Max on the Citadel, uh, which it's been like three months since I've played. So it's going to be a couple hours of that, and then another hour of the construction of the Lego set that is in the background of the Citadel set back here. Whoa, 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 Neuschwanstein whoa. Castle, so we'll He's be doing... He's been practicing Lego the last couple weeks. Yes, yes, that's how the topic came up, Dan. <laughs> I don't know, Dave. We're going up against someone who has uh, been... Yeah, season Lego builder the last Oh, uh, it sounds like the Lego master is making some excuses. I, I, I don't know. I just, I, I haven't built a Lego in you know a what? time. You know what? Mark this down. I'm agreeing with Dan. I'm going with Dan. I think we were screwed. <laughs> <laughs> I think you willingly entered into a competition of your own accord that you did not realize the full ramifications of. <laughs> A.K.A. that shit was your fault. <laughs> Border doing the quaka. <laughs> Oh my god, can I put the trash can in the back of the, uh... Oh my god. In the back of the truck? No, it can't. What? Boo! And that's like a little ramp back there. I feel like on a slightly larger size Vladdy. of this model, it would actually... You could actually sweep up tiny little Lego bricks into it. Vladdy, if I do that, will that make you happy? Time to fling it off the table and watch it break. I was I, very I close to, like... To get ready for the next show. I was very close to, Gentlemen, like, demolition it was fun. derby with that. Until Absolutely. next time. So it went Boater, Dave, Dan on that yep. showdown. So, well, uh, we'll do this, another challenge. This, this is going to live in the set back here now, right next to the uh, Mega Bloks Halo. Um, here, Elite, you are trash now, so you get to hold on to that. Boater, can you move your game guide? Your, uh, your guide. Oh. There. Yay! <laughs> it's actually mostly intact. <laughs> Woohoo! I've learned nothing! <laughs> Of course, it also helped that it went off the side and hit my leg before hitting the ground, so it wasn't a full plummet. Well, there's a reason I did it that way instead of, like, into the wall here or uh, the unforgiving floor. Yeah, I only broke like, <laughs> into three pieces. I, like, I've learned nothing. <laughs> I've learned nothing. Awesome. Well, yeah, so I would say that that has been it for the Nerd Glasses podcast. For this week, at least. For this week. Uh, as much as we tried to get everything out to you, unfortunately, we were unable to get to Death Stranding this week, so... Oh, no! We'll have to uh, table Sam Porter Bridges over to the other side uh, for next time. I've, I've enjoyed, though, that every week we've managed to sneak in something about Kojima, um, <laughs> but not something that's actually Kojima's. Like... This has been, you know what? I'm going to put all these loose pieces right here in the back because they're definitely trash. Dave, Dave, should we uh, try to get Dan to make a Nerd Glass t-shirt that just has the caption, I've learned nothing? I mean, <laughs> I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that quote. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll let us have that one. Um, well, and the spare piece can go in the garbage can over here, too. That, uh, that and so much more coming to a local uh, uh, t-shirt cartel to you. Um... <laughs> <laughs> this garbage can isn't big enough to hold all the spare pieces. I'm disappointed. Should we? So what? What would the picture be? You know what? Um, that's gonna be the that's gonna be the uh, the question for next week for Nerd Glasses on Discord. Is <laughs> what would the image be that matches along with I've, I've learned, learned nothing? nothing. <laughs> and I think it should just I don't know. Like I could see a Lego minifig put together incorrectly. 
just like sideways with a leg sticking out of the foot and the head like on the shoulder. <laughs> or or just two da- uh, Dave and Boder Lego minifigures in pieces. Yes, there we go. Design us All as right. minifigs. <laughs> Lego flying off the table slash cliff. Fair. Por que no los dos? Fair. Us in pieces flying <laughs> off the table slash cliff. We will continue to ponder it. Oh, I should point this towards Dave a little more. We'll continue to ponder that. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, I would love it if you stay tuned for The Citadel. Immediately following their glasses podcast here, we're going to go offline for yeah, two to five to Dave. It's cleaning my the, on the table, and I'm really impressed by how like <laughs> well this thing works as a brush, by the way. It's absurd. We're going to be offline for two to five minutes as we get everything switched over for the Citadel, and then the pre-roll will be right up. Uh, Grab something to drink, grab a bite to eat, go to the bathroom, and then I'll see you right back here at Insane Games TV on the Citadel. Uh, Until then, or until next week for Nerd Glasses, or until whenever you decide to tune back in right here at Insane Games TV, I've been Boater. I've been Dave Mann. And this has been the Nerd Glasses Podcast. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great night. (laughs) 